Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, I think since last summer. And, uh, and we're back now with episode 23, and we have our friend Mike here. Uh, Mike, I actually recently met on, uh, on Anthony's stream, uh, Anthony Perez's stream. We were, um, he had me on to talk about Mortal Kombat uh, a few months ago, right? And, we, and then Mike was there, and so the three of us kind of all uh, chatted about Mortal Kombat, our, our likes, dislikes, everything, and it introduced me to Mike here. So Mike, introduce yourself to everyone, tell everyone where they can find you, and a little bit about your YouTube channel, and if you guys want links to that, those are both in the description box to his YouTube channel and his Instagram down below. Yeah, of course. Well, firstly, Seek, man, uh, thanks for just having me on the Parasite podcast. Honestly, recently, um, just been checking out the episode, especially one with John really interested me because you guys used to work at Lego. Uh, yes. I, I used to as well, so I could certainly share some stories. <laughs> awesome. Um, for anyone that doesn't know me yet, I'm Mike or Michael, but I prefer Mike. Um, my channel name is The Z Review. Um, however, mm-hmm. in the next kind of couple of weeks to a month, it is going to go through a name change on the channel. Um, okay. I'm going to go be going through a separate video to kind of explain why. Um, but the content's going to stay the same. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, essentially, uh, uh, pretty much I uh, started my YouTube journey about two, maybe three years ago now. Um, I, I learned, it kind of similar to other movie reviewers. Like, I was watching movie reviewers. I got introduced to Chris Dubin, uh-huh. And when I got introduced to him, like, I, I love his reviews, but there were certain reviews I was just disagreed on completely. Sure. And and I thought, well, I'm a kind of a creative person outside of just everyday life anyway. So I thought, well, why not give YouTube a go? <laughs> uh, worst case, if my video sucks, I can just delete my channel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so essentially, I kind of found this platform, YouTube. I really enjoyed it, but at, at first, I didn't really have a foot um and it's interesting that you mentioned anthony perez because firstly it's how i met you of course um also it's kind of like he brought me into the youtuber support youtubers facebook page um ah. where you know i got no like black plastic media uh, rashad right. dave jacob you know all those great guys right and i kind of felt like a sense of community like i felt like i kind of belonged somewhere and and had a purpose for my youtube because before then i would just kind of upload once every two months or something you know and sure. didn't have a plan you know i think it's one of those early stages in youtube you just don't know what you're going to do unless you have that specific goal i guess right um, so yeah a little bit about my channel um i pretty much talk about movies i uh, new or old that's kind of non-subjective cool. and yeah and my big niche is back to the future um nice absolutely <laughs> nice. I, I know you kind of know a little bit about that um sure but yeah, yeah, I just absolutely love Back to the Future. Got the shirt on right now. I um, love it. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, actually, that was one of the things when uh, Anthony mentioned that when we were talking about Mortal Kombat. I think it was either before or after we recorded. He had mentioned, he's like, yeah, you should check out Mike's channel. Because I'm not on Facebook. I don't really do social media. I'm barely on Instagram ever. Um, and I kind of distance myself from a lot of that stuff, which people are always like, how are you going to make your channel grow if you don't go on there? I'm like, I'm i'm okay i'm doing fine <laughs> like it's not a big deal um but uh, but i do like to peek in to get like you said that little sense of community and i think i met i met you through there blacktastic media i also met through anthony just by commenting on his page and then blacktastic would reply to my comments and that's how i started to get to know him and know his channel and uh and i i like that and i like these guys are really great i like how they kind of look at movies, uh, they, they're very similar to me. They look uh, for specific things in movies. Um, and I kind of like that. And I, and I I do like that kind of network because now when I think of Anthony, I think of Blacktastic and I think of you and I think of Rashad and I, I start, it's like a domino effect. Um, and that's really good. Uh, actually, that's a, that's a really good um, group together that you guys have there and that you're um, building each other up and helping each other out and uh, sharing each other's uh, opinions and having each other you guests collab a lot. And that's very different from my show. Like my show is, I, I like you, I found someone I liked and I was like, like you like Chris Duckman. I like this guy called the Rage in Nation um, and he does uh, Transformer reviews. And I just kind of really liked his vibe. He was like a, a regular nerdy dude like me and uh, he didn't like commenting on rumors or leaks he just like commenting on actual news and that's kind of it imprinted on me and uh and so but uh, much like alex i don't collaborate that often <laughs> so i and that's what that's why i created the parasite podcast i was like you know what i want to get to know the people that make content but i also want to get to know people that 
watch my show too and kind of give them a voice as well. Um, so, uh, so speaking of Back to the Future, we'll start there and then we'll get into Lego and all that stuff because I'm, I'm excited. There's a lot of avenues to go now. Um, sure. But Back to the Future, like you said, sometimes if you have a plan, like I did not have a plan when I started YouTube, so I didn't know where I was going to end up. I had no idea I was going to end up making 650 episodes about Venom for sure. Um, yeah. But you, you know, when you started your channel, did you have a plan for Back to the Future or was that just always in the back of your head like, maybe one day I'll get there uh, because clearly you're a big fan of that. You even have a great show on your channel called Back to the Fans uh, where you meet other fans of that. So, you know, tell me a little bit about how, you know, how that started, how you got into Back to the Future on your channel. Was that always the plan or did you end up getting there? Yeah. Uh, well, firstly, man, uh, before I kind of touch on about myself, um, I just want to say congrats to you on getting the 650 episodes about Venom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, personally, I've only ever seen the movies and know a little bit about like the Spider-Man like video games. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, like it's just so cool that we've both got separate passions and we're exploring both of them on our respective channels. Like that's just so awesome. I agree. Um, so yeah, kind of just to like answer your question. So when I started my YouTube channel, it was a bit of a strange one because I've always looked back to the future since I was maybe about 14, 15 years old. I'm now huh? nearly 31. Um, okay. So, so some time. Um, half your life. Yeah, half your life. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much, cool. yeah. <laughs> it did a lot for me. did a lot for me growing up. Um, so when I kind of start my channel, I didn't really cover anything back to the future related. Um, I mean, one of my first videos is kind of like me showing off my big Back to the Future collection. I've downsized since then. Okay. Um, but again, I think it's kind of that first year and a half, I kind of had no sense of direction on YouTube. Uh, I would say I was probably like lost in the shuffle a little bit. Okay. I, I mean, compared to thousands of other YouTubes right now, I probably still am to a degree. Um, but I disagree. Yeah, it was just... Well, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're doing great. Uh, but yeah, keep going. Well, thanks. Sorry. Man. <laughs> no, no, of course. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a bit of a strange one. So when I kind of met Anthony Perez, and again, I've got to just give a big shout out to Perez because he's done more for me than he'll ever realize. Yeah. Uh, and again, we met, otherwise I wouldn't have maybe known who you were. Right, you know? right. right. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, so anyway, when I met Perez, he was, you know, he got into this group. He, you know, got me into these guys who have been talking about Black Tastic Shard, etc. Mm -hmm. And at that point in kind of my YouTube, I was like, right, I love talking about movies, but ultimately, what do I know the most of in life? Back to the future. Right. <laughs> and I wanted an avenue where on my channel, it's called the Z Review. So it's not as if it's just movie review, you know? Right. And, and at that point, I was like, I really want to cover Back to the Future, but what can I do with that avenue? Because... There's probably already dedicated channels to being, you know, like the latest news, that kind of stereotype as such. So I do certainly cover bits of that, but my main one, as you said, was back to the fans. So uh. for me, it kind of like YouTube, I didn't really have any people I knew that love Back to the Future as much as I do. And I wanted to essentially get involved with more of those people. So right. I had some kind of avenue to get my kind of, geekiness out there <laughs> and right. and you know have that communication because like yourself you know you'll you want to meet like other venom like minded people sure and uh, yeah so anyway i got talking to a guy called fernando and uh, i went to see the back to the future musical premiere in manchester last year when it came before covid uh -huh. and uh, and funny enough fernando i don't know how we communicate together I, put maybe a random post out on Facebook. Uh, and he said, oh, I saw you at the musical. Uh, he he cool. came across my channel. I, I don't, yeah. I can't remember how, but he came across it. Yeah. Uh, and I said to Fernando, I said, look, well, what I'd like to do is kind of talk to fellow Back to the Future fans and right. make a show that's all about Back to the Future. They talk about their collections, show them off, show, or tell everyone how they got into Back to the Future to start with, because, right. Um, kind of long story short, but I got into it when I was about 14, 15 years old. Uh, and that was when I was at school, I was a very quiet kid. I used to get bullied a lot. And that was the one thing for me where I, once I watched that movie, it kind of upped my confidence to see Martin McFly. Right. So 
that was kind of my little bit backstory about it. I could go on longer, but I'm not going to bore you. <laughs> that, yeah, you're not boring uh, me at all, man. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so essentially that's just a very quick, quick version of how I got into Back to the Future. Okay. So, so I kind of wondered, okay, so how are other people getting into Back to the Future? Um, did they watch it with their partners, the families? Were they in a similar situation like myself and, re- you know, resonate with the film? Right. Um, so yeah, I got in touch with Fernando. We arranged the first episode of Back to the Fans, who's my first ever guest. And nice. up until now, I'm currently on episode seven. Seven, right, yeah, seven. Seven, so, so not many, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. getting there. But still, um, that's great. Yeah, man. And then um, well, my recent guest, I just dropped a video today mm-hmm. uh, of a guy called Justin from Canada. So mm-hmm. it's not just UK exclusive, you know, it's all over the world where I meet sure. these people. Uh, and he actually owns a DeLorean. And, ah, yes. Yeah. I did watch that yeah. episode. I was like, I was like, wait, because it says it on the thumbnail too. Like he owns it. Yeah, right. I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just want to advertise that because um, I, I just think it's worth showing off. I mean, Right. DeLoreans are very hard to come by. Yes, um, yeah. Not many exists in the world. True. Um, so yeah, well, they're uh, all time traveling. That's why you can't. You, right. Not all of them are in one <laughs> place at once. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one's in Canada. Time travel. Yeah. Much. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Five years from now, though, they're all going to show up again. We're going to be like, oh, that's where they've been. Yeah. Man, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, that you know, like that kind of like, that's kind of like the quick story of how I got into like this back to the fan segment I made. And, okay. And when I got that kind of started, I was like, wow, like I don't realize how many different avenues there is to explore Back to the Future. Sure. Um, so I've done Back to the Fans. I've done um a review on like a brand new book Bob Gale released about the DeLorean schematic. Right. Um, Michael J. Fox's bio, like newest biography. Um, yeah, just, just all sorts of avenues where I can just explore that passion even further. And I'm also in a couple of Facebook groups where it's purely just back to the future talk all the time. Right. Um, so that's it's amazing. been interesting. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I, cause I was thinking that like you were saying how back to the future, that was already your passion. Um, for me, it was like, I, I always liked Venom, but I didn't know a lot about Venom. So like when, when I was, when I started, when the show started gaining support, I was like, really out of all the things I've made videos on, (laughs) like Venom is the thing that everybody likes me talking about. I'm like, that's surprising. And I'm like, I don't even know that much about this guy. And, uh, and then now I would, I would probably borderline call myself an expert in the character because now we've like you know, like you said you find other avenues that splinter out of something that you're like i never would have thought of that like back to the future like you said you could do episodes on cars and mechanics and things like that because you have the delorean so that could be like a focal point of conversation um what type of engine parts are in it and stuff like that and then you could go so you could be everything from like a a, a tech guy to a car guy to a, a science fiction guy like it it kind of and then like you said even following just the actors like i think i saw something the other day where you posted a video what if jeff goldblum played doc brown um right so like you have like these what if scenarios of like other actors that could have potentially gotten the role and it, it's just so funny to think about all these things and i'm like yeah you could really you could do a lot like earlier when you said like congrats to 650 episodes of venom when i was around episode 250 or 260 my friend Joe in California who does a podcast called Joe on Joe where he talks about GI Joe all the time. Um, he, he, he actually was like, I was like, Hey, will you be on episode of Venom vlog with me? He's like, sure. What is this? Like episode 40 or 50 or something like that. And I go, no, this episode like 282. And he goes, what? And he goes, a venom. (laughs) He goes, he goes, goes, what's there to talk about? Is he that interesting? And I'm like, I guess so. Like, um, but it's funny. Like you said, other avenues open up. So, what is something that surprised you? And then like, we'll dovetail into some of the other stuff we talked about earlier. Like, but just to right. stay on this for a second, like on back to future, what's cause you met Fernando, you met all these great people and it's cool. Cause I'm sure when you interview them, you're like, Hey, do you know any other fans? Like, you know, and you start branching out. Um, what is it the most surprising thing as you've started zeroing in on the back to future stuff? What was the most surprising thing to come out of that for you so far? Um, well, to be honest, uh, the whole experience <laughs> okay because uh, i mean like yourself you know like as you said like you know 650 episodes on venom and yeah. you know your friend joe you know with 440 episodes for your 282 <laughs> yes. 
and and you know and again it's it's great that you know like me and yourself you know we've learned yeah. about this one subject right. and you know getting to the nitty gritty of it that not a lot of people know right um so I, I guess for me in terms of if we're talking about back to the fans in general yeah. uh i think the most kind of surprising thing for me is just how like well people are taken to it and okay like people that actually want to do it um so so for example so when i had fernando on so he's based in spain uh-huh. um but his girlfriend lives in the uk okay and um and he knows english but you know it's not his first language as far as i'm sure. aware sure so so when i spoke to fernando i said look I, you know i really want to make more of this series do you do you know anyone huh. and and when i and and down the line um my next guest was a guy called herman and he's based in argentina and no way yeah yeah which That's is crazy sweet. right yeah and and anyway so when i got in touch with herman uh, i had to use a translator because he doesn't know english very well it's mainly spanish okay. right um so so you know i got in touch with him and then then it went on to william who again is from argentina right and and yeah it's just crazy because with working with those guys so just very quickly kind of like to give them a quick plug um yeah. i've actually got their shirt on right now uh, so i'll stand up a little bit show the shirt cool uh so they essentially have a website called back to the future club argentina okay. and they make these shirts and every portion of sale of their shirts they make a donation directly to the michael j fox foundation okay and it's just so awesome you know that that's they've so great to get that yeah, yeah. I, and that for me is just what i love you know like yourself like they have a passion for something and right. they're making cool shirts but also helping fight against parkinson's which is just right awesome um and yeah, I think kind of to mainly answer the question. Um, I think it's mainly just that reception I've had of it overall, and you know, people being wanting to jump on, or like say, like Justin, who I've recently right. just had on, he was telling me about him and his dad. They look back to the future. They have a DeLorean, so that was right. cool. And then a sneak peek for next week's episode, so you're the first to know this. Uh-oh. Um, Justin's dad, Marcel, and Justin worked on making a replica of Doc's van in Back to the Future. No way. Um, yeah, That's... so they've actually got the working mechanism where it actually falls down. DeLorean can actually drive into it as well. Yeah. Um, so it's just stuff like that that baffles me because these guys and girls, like yeah. one thing for me is just one thing I big love and sorry to ramble on a little bit. Uh, That's okay. But one thing I just honestly truly love about it is the fact that these fans like myself mm-hmm. are kind of like maybe their passions are hidden a little bit like you know maybe I didn't do back to the fans I mean they may have got onto another say YouTube platform or a video of sorts um, but for now it's just so cool that I know that I've got that chance to actually give those guys or girls a chance to showcase like their collections their passions and just these projects like that, this van I say next week that they, they took the time to build it was a hard like long process build and yeah. you know more people should know about that you know so that for me is like truly one thing that kind of just keeps me going with that like i just love it man that's cool yeah i i can't imagine so like so back to the future like i'm sure i saw it and loved it when i was a kid because they this came out in the 80s when i probably would have saw them for sure but right. unfortunately my my memory is for most of that is wiped. So although I have some memory, or I have knowledge, I don't, I don't have memories. I have knowledge of stuff, but some things didn't stick. And and Back to the Future was one of them. Um, and so I guess because I'm, I've been distanced from it, I'm actually kind of blown away that you were saying like I'm meeting people from around the world that like this franchise in this movie, and that's amazing to me. Like because I, I think of things that reach a global audience, and I guess. I'm, I'm obviously that one did, but I wouldn't have thought of that until you said it. So when you're like, oh, I'm finding fans in Spain and Argentina and all around the world and uh, Canada who are big fans, I'm like, that's amazing. That just shows, though, um, they're like probably why Hollywood and all these uh, all those uh, producer types target these older movies, these like the 80s, and right. you know to, to reboot and uh, and because of the nostalgia, it's not just because they have an audience here in America, um, which I didn't assume, but I just, I guess like you, I that's probably cool that every time you get someone from a different part of the world, you're like, 
hey, I'm going to talk to someone from Argentina now. Like, that's cool. <laughs> um, but it is, it's that connecting thing. Like, that's one of the things on Venom Vlog, like the, the phrase here, we are Venom. Uh, it's such a uniting phrase if you look at it that way. And I do, I meet people from all over now who are people are like uh, writing me from Japan and other countries and, you know, the Middle East too. Like, they're like, hey, I, I live over here. I have a Venom shirt. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, that's uh, that's amazing that Venom has gotten its claws everywhere, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, but sa same with these guys with uh, Back to the Future, um, you know, to, to see that that passion like spread. And like you said, when you meet other people that share that passion, um, you kind of, you kind of do, you want to, you're like, Hey, I don't have a big platform, but I want to share your stuff. And, and that's, you know, that's the same. And I started that way with, you know, a couple hundred subscribers and, you know, now a few years later we're at, you know, nearing 3000. So it's, that's a good place to be in that you're at right now. Like, that's why earlier I said, I was like, you're, you're doing good. Like, don't, don't panic. Like, you know, things, things are moving forward. And, uh, and I like your perception and yeah, what you said about, um, Parkinson's and with you know with uh, Michael J Fox that's also something we noticed on the Venom vlog was Eddie Brock as a as a um, suicide survivor and so right. we put all the links to suicide you know help in our description boxes um, you just never know all these things of fiction in a roundabout way will lead or connect to real world things where, where real world impacts exist so oh, definitely. that's all yeah so so that's cool that you're you're you know, meeting all these other people, people that are like you, which is, I think I always said that, like when I was a, my mom was like, when you were a kid, all you wanted was other people to love the stuff you loved so that, yeah. you, cause you thought if they loved comics the way you did, they wouldn't bully you because you liked it. And she's like, right. she's like, you never wanted to fight back. you like, you always just wanted them to be converted. And, uh, and so, and it sounds like that's yeah. what you want. And, and that's what a lot of people want. They just want to find other people like them. Um, right. because none of us want to be alone ultimately, you know, we want to share our love and we want to talk to someone who gets us, <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, well, yeah, go ahead. Well, well, no, I was just going to say very quickly in the back of what you just said. I yeah. mean, I can imagine when you start out your channel, I can't imagine you ever thought, right. One day I want to connect to someone in Japan, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just, it, it happens. You're just like, oh, wow, I guess that does make sense that that would happen, but I didn't expect it to happen. Um, right. <laughs> that's really cool. And you said, like, you you were talking about, like, how you have a lot of other passions, obviously, and um, and you you go down other avenues. Like, earlier before we started the show, I saw a Lego set behind you that you had for right. Ninjago. And, yeah, I used to work at Lego, um, and John, like you said, you know, I had him on the show, and I met him here in, right. in Florida when I when I moved here. Um so what got you to shift gears a little bit? Obviously, there's a Back to the Future Lego, so there's an easy transition. Um, right. <laughs> what got you into Lego, and, and what got you into working for Lego as well? Right, yeah. Um, so no one's actually ever asked me this question, so <laughs> okay. yes. I'll give you props for that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, so you heard it here first. Um, yes. Exclusive. So Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So essentially, um, when so here in the UK, it's a little bit different in terms of like school to college and universities, that, that okay. kind of thing, high schools and stuff. Sure. Um, so here in the UK, after you finish, like, I think it's secondary school or high school for you guys. OK, yeah. Um, you go to college for like two, three years, then to university. Ah, OK. Um, so anyway, I went to college for two years and uh, I dropped out of the course. It wasn't for me. Uh, and then ever since then, I've worked in retail. So I mm -hmm. uh, worked in like video game stores, CD stores, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and once I, and believe it or not, this was maybe, um, just trying to think now, maybe 2011 ish time, 2013, somewhere around that point. Okay. Um, I was essentially working for a store that sells CDs and DVDs. And I went to Florida. I actually went on vacation to Florida. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've been a couple of times, man. Lovely place. <laughs> um, so I, I went to Florida, and at the time, the workplace where I was at, they didn't renew the lease on the shop. So oh. when I got back, I was told, right, you either kind of, you know, get made redundant as such, or I could try finding another job. I was like, um, so my manager gave me a heads up, so, you know, fair play to them. Sure, sure. Nice. Uh, so at the time, I was like, like, what am I going to do? I'll be out of a job. And the redundancy wasn't going to be like a big PR as such, you know? Um, so I was looking all over the job boards and stuff. And then a position came up for Lego in maybe 15, 20 minutes where I left. 
Okay. And I, I played with Lego as a kid, um, okay. but never since that point. It was maybe right. eight, nine years old, and then didn't get back into it until about eight, nine years ago. Uh, anyway, the job came up, and I thought, you know what it is? I- I'm going to apply for it. Um, worst case, I don't get it, you know? And right. so anyway, good news is, got the job, um, left the left the store on good terms, the CD, DVD store, uh-huh. I got the job at Lego. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure it's similar in America, but kind of like, because we put the store from scratch, and there was right. nothing there, had to put the shelves in, everything like that. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it was pretty interesting experience. We had, I think, one or two weeks to get the full thing set up. Um, that included building the models for the displays. Right. Um, wow. So, so I remember the first ever Lego model I built, returning to Lego in my life. I uh, was the Batman Arkham Asylum. Um, <laughs> yeah. So right in the street, we <laughs> right up in my alley, fitting the DC feet. Yes. Um, so I built it, and I was like, "Wow, this is just awesome," you know. Um, so yeah, so eventually I started just as like a sales assistant, sales colleague, and built my way up to management. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was there for maybe three, three and a half years. Okay. Uh, yeah, look, honestly, one of my best jobs I've personally ever had. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got into Lego. And then when I left the store, uh, I've kind of moved on to like different avenues as now. Sure, sure. Um, but when I left the store, it was only maybe about a year ago. Because um, since that time, I had a lot of Legos and I had to sort them, um, you know, just to finance other kind of things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it was only about a year ago, uh, I came across the Ninjago range again, because when I worked at the store, I remember at the time, we didn't sell a lot of the product. Um, it was big in America in terms of they had the cartoon, the animation show. Uh, but right. we didn't have that in the UK, so no one knew about it whatsoever. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, so I took my own time to watch the show, right? learn about it, and then kind of like embed that knowledge on people that could come in the store and be like, have you heard of this range? It's it's Lego's own brand, but it's it's awesome. Sure. Um, especially Garmadon. He, he's my favorite. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Garmadon! So, <laughs> oh man he's so yeah. cool yeah. <laughs> so yeah so i learned about ninjago uh, and then about a year ago uh, i saw because i didn't know at the time i found that there was like the ninjago city and mm-hmm. the docks and then they released the gardens this year and yeah. i was just like wow i was like that interests me because th- there's not a lot of dc or marvel models that are just like purely building Sets. right right yes they're mainly vehicles that's it they're mainly yeah vehicles right yeah right and and i was yeah. thinking i don't want a bunch of vehicles lying on display i'd rather have like complete buildings and connect them together or so you know right um so i came across the ninjago and i was like wow i, I have to have that set it's so cool <laughs> and yeah so i've got those and i've currently got let me just see if i can get it over here okay and and then i've got the uh we were speaking before about a Destiny bounty. Nice. Uh, that uh, boat is so man. cool. Yeah, man. Oh, love it. My favorite yeah. Lego movie. Um, nice. Cool. So yeah, that's kind of how I got into Lego. Pretty cool. <laughs> that's awesome. I um, yeah, I I I too like I obviously I worked at Lego for five years almost. Um, I I right. left just before my five year. Uh, anniversary <laughs> um so i didn't i didn't get the little statue or anything like that um but uh I, it's funny right when i left i sold all my lego <laughs> like right. i was like i was like okay now i can sell it because you know, obviously when you work there you're not allowed to, to do that so i was like okay right. i can sell it i can help pay for my move to florida and since i had so much it was like a nice extra you know couple hundred bucks uh because i gave right. my friend a deal i'm like hey he's got a couple kids so it's 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 not easy um so I was like, oh, good. It, it helped. It kind of helped me uh, get here, which is good. Um, but uh, but Lego itself, like I've always, I, I, I'm sure I played with it as a kid, but um, I got into it post brain aneurysm. Um, it was right. uh, something that was recommended to me just for, you know, t- well, partly like developmental tests and things like that, see what I can do and my comprehension skills. And so it kind of right. started like that, but then it turned into like a more of a therapeutic thing where I would calm me it would help me just sit and be still because i have a problem doing that um and so uh so yeah it was it was nice so i started loving lego for that reason and that's the reason why i left comic books and making comic books 
and pursued a, a retail career at Lego um, because That's I just, cool. yeah, I just was like, comics just weren't, it was one of those things where it's like um, catching the Roadrunner. That's how I always compared it. I'm like, uh, I, I was pursuing comics and I worked in comics for like 10 or 12 years before aneurysm and after aneurysm. And it was one of those things where I just got to a point where I felt like I finally caught the, the Roadrunner. And just like the episode where the coyote does that, he forgot what he was supposed to do with it. Like he, he gets it and he's like, wait, why was I chasing this thing? And then he lets it go and it runs away and he's like, oh, right, I'm going to eat it. And then, you know, and that's kind of yeah. how I describe my comic book career. I, I Once I had a, a chance to move up in it, I didn't really know why I wanted to anymore. Um, right. And so, uh, and, and also I worked from home, so I didn't interact with people a lot unless we went to conventions. And at the end of the day, I think ultimately I, ha I like people. I, I tried to describe that to someone once and they thought I was a weirdo, but I was like, no, I like people. I'm interested in people and human behavior. I just, I find it fascinating. So I was like, where's, where will I get the most of that? And that's when I was like, oh, I can go work at a store and do retail again. Um, so that's, uh, that's cool. And that's cool that you have such a fondness for Ninjago. Um, we had two of the writers of the Ninjago cartoon as guests on the show uh, before because they wrote the Venom cartoon um, that oh. we talked about uh, like a year and a half ago. And uh, they were like, oh, yeah, we also do Ninjago. I'm like, what? Like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Um, so uh, shout out to, to, yeah, shout out to Doc Wyatt and those guys. Like, they, they're they really cool guys. Um, so awesome. being a Ninjago fan and being a, like a Lego fan, being a Back to the Future fan, like, um, is there any chance on your channel as you're exploring different avenues? Like, have you, do you have, do you own the DeLorean set? Um, the Lego DeLorean set? Hell um, yeah. and I, and did you, have you, you probably already have, but have you made a video of you building it? No, um, I do own the set. Um, yes, I actually have it like yeah. up there on top. Okay. Of the yeah. Nice. Um, I've also got the brick heads as well. Um, Sweet. Oh yeah, that's right. So, Doc and, uh, and Marty, right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> um, so I have actually been thinking about exploring a uh, Lego Avenue on my set. Um, uh -huh. So because I thought on my channel, obviously, it's just the Z review. Uh, right. and, the, and the new name I've got is, well, going to be having, it yeah. isn't movie really focused at all again. So it's just okay. open to interpretation. Sure. Um, yeah. So I've got the Destiny button that I just showed before. Right. Um, and then I've got like the three big Ninjago sets as well. Right. And, and those sets are hard to come by, especially at the moment. Yes. Right. Um, so I was thinking when I get over to my girlfriend's place when I'm moving kind of next month, yeah. um, I was thinking of maybe doing kind of like a time lapse build of each one onto my channel. Nice. Um, because I, I love Lego. Uh, I want yeah. to get into it more, but it's expensive. Sure, um, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> especially, especially when you don't work, work for them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> think, yeah, exactly. Right. But yeah, when you, when you don't work there, it really is quite expensive. Although yeah. it's awesome. And, you know, like, as you said, you know, it's helped you with like the brain aneurysm. And in the shop would get so many like autistic kids come in and it would yes. just help them massively. You know, yes. and so, you know, it's worth it. It's like, you know, say if someone gets like a tattoo like myself. The mm -hmm. price of that for a set, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I've always kind of thought about maybe taking it apart, putting it back together, and building it on my channel. Um, but I think I'd do like a speed build. I don't think I'd want to sure. do like a an hour and a half session right. of recording that and then someone watch that because they're probably not going to watch that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I thought about uh, it. I'd yeah. watch it. <laughs> oh, <thank> you. <laughs> I'd watch every minute. I because I follow a couple like a uh, uh, Bricksmith and uh, and a couple others. Like I follow them. Right. Um, you know, uh, yeah, on, through, I follow them on Instagram, but I follow their YouTube channels as well and subscribe to them. And right. that's a great community. Like that, like uh, when I meet other Lego people uh, who are fans, like they, it's usually a really great community because a lot of times they they sound and talk just like us. Like they they have a specific right. thing they're into, but Lego is like is kind of like a, a way to connect what they love right. to what I love, you know, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, that's. Right. That's that's really cool. I, I would say yeah, but the speed build idea is neat and and doing it as a time lapse, that's really cool. And like I also like that you're doing that. That you're the Z review, and then soon you'll you'll have this new title that kind of is ambiguous. You know, it can cover anything. I've yeah. always like when I started my channel, that's what I did. The Seek and Destroy show, which is surprisingly still around, uh, but I right. think the original hundred episodes have all been deleted <laughs> uh, because oh. I wasn't sure if they followed the Kappa 
rules because I did a lot of like okay. toy reviews for like kids, you know, because my nephew was watching the show. He was growing up watching. So I was like, I was targeting younger kids with toy reviews. Um, so it was like toys four to seven and some of them even younger. So I wasn't sure if I would, I could still do that and be a PG 13 channel. So I ended up deleting all those episodes, uh, which sucks. Uh, cause I, you know, I went, I got scared. Like they scared me. They, they successfully scared me. Um, but, but I seek and destroy show is a variety show. And I like that because if I'm like, Hey, I want to talk about Kang the Conqueror, you know, or if I want to talk about, uh, um, you know, the Power Ranger movie that I don't know much about Power Rangers, but I saw the movie and I have thoughts on it. Like, I think I, 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 I like having a show like that so I can really do anything right. I want. And I, so I like your approach. And I, like you said, you still have the, the back to the future as a focus that you have, you know, a couple different shows that, you know, center around that. But I do right. like, I like your approach. And uh, I, I, like you said, it because of that approach too, I think helps open the door to other people watching, you know, cause then you have people come to your channel for transformers and then Lego and then back to the future. You know, if you have all that, you know, you hopefully eventually you can juggle it all. Cause eventually people yeah. like my channel, they're like, just talk about venom. Shut up about transformers. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Venom. I got it. I got it. Um, so you do have to cross that bridge eventually, but, but until the, until then it's, and even after that, it's still fun. Like I still love doing what I do. Well, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's one of those where, like, I I never came on YouTube to be like, right, I'm going to specifically talk about movies. Right. Uh, and kind of like yourself, you know, although it's mainly Venom, you have right. other avenues. Like, you know, you do, like, comic breakdowns or read-throughs, right. et cetera. Right. And, and, and it shouldn't be the case of you're limited to one thing. I mean, right. if you want to be, fair enough. Sure. Um, But, but yeah, for me, like, I, I don't want to just talk about movies. So, I love them. Don't get me wrong. But... My passion's Back to the Future, right. um, or a Lego set building that like that for me excites me. You know, like um, Black Plastic, I think recently said this that you know music, your movie review, sorry, are great to do, mm. but they don't really take a lot of talent to do. Um, sure, but you know anyone can jump on the camera and be like, oh yeah, I've seen this movie, great. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. <laughs> but but for me, like I like doing that. Don't get me wrong, but. Yeah. I'd rather, because again, like I've got just a, quite a creative mind in general. Right. Um, in, in my spare time, I haven't done it for a while, but I like to just write fictional books. Mm -hmm. um, so again, stuff like that goes through my mind and I'm just like, wow, like I've got this platform now where I can speak about anything and everything. As you said, you might go one day, right? I want to speak about Transformers. You know, not had to be Venom, you know? Right. Um, and that for me excites me. It's like, again, I love movies, but the reviews i enjoy doing the most out of anything whatsoever is back to the future uh my adventure day kind of videos mm -hmm. and just anything kind of besides movies sometimes sure um it, yeah it's just i don't know it, I, don't get me wrong i love talking about movies and sure. i've got a like a michael j fox filmography list i'm gonna go be doing soon so that i'm really excited for cool. um but yeah as i said it's just nice to have this outlet where it, my title you know, it doesn't subject what I'm going to do, you know? Right. Right. And that's why I actually, my, cause my show, my channel for like three and a half years was called Venom vlog. And I recently right. just went back to calling it seek and destroy. Cause I'm like, yeah. well, let's, let's start, you know, cause we're going to start transitioning out of Venom vlog soon enough. And, uh, and I'm going to be doing like a fantastic four podcast and a couple other ideas I have. Um, right. So, uh, but I, I agree. And I talk about that on my channel a lot. Like for years I was like, oh yeah, like reaction. I hate doing reactions. Uh, I'll just right. go ahead and confess to everyone watching my channel. I hate doing reactions more than, in, yeah, because I'm like you, like I have a creative side and there's a part of me that's like, well, I feel like I, I'm actually doing more by doing a comic book breakdown or discussion because I'm at least trying to find the meaning of things, you know, and, and I'm not just sharing my thoughts, but I'm dissecting it. So I'm trying to do something creative other than just giving just my thoughts. Right. So I feel like I'm putting a little bit of work into that. Plus I got to, you know, read the books too. So I'm, I'm, there's time not on camera that goes into making those episodes. Um, so I, I look well, at that as a little bit more work, but when I do review or reactions, I go, this is so boring. Like, <laughs> like I, I'm just, people are literally just watching me go, Oh, whoa, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm I like, it yeah. And I, I kind of, I do, it sounds mean, but I'm like, yeah, it takes no talent to do that. But yet I still do them from time, like coming up, me and my friend, Alex, um, we used to be best friends or we're still best friends, but we used to live in LA together and see each right. other a lot more. 
and now we don't. And he was just like, hey, man, I, even if we don't record it, like I want to, we uh, on a weekly basis, watch a movie or a TV show with you. And so we came right. up with like, we did the DC animated movies. Now we're going to do what if we're going to do reactions to what if every cool. week when that show drops, um, because I wanted to review the show already, but I won't have time to review it and do reactions to it. So I'm like, yeah, we'll just do right. it all in one video. But I know some people are going to be like, you're a hypocrite. You said reaction videos are for lazy people. I'm like, well, if your whole channel is just reactions, yeah, you know, like I, that's where I kind of draw the line, like doing them every now and again. Like I've always done reactions, but I'm, I, I do. I, the part of me feels kind of like, eh, I feel silly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I look forward to when you get to the point, we're going to share creative writing and sharing those things. Cause I'm starting to finally get to that point um, as well. Right. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of stuff about my books coming up, ne my Neverland trilogy. So like, yeah. I look forward to that. And that's why I like about black plastic is he's doing his Compton documentary and he's doing these little like videos that he does. Uh, they're amazing. Like, and the guy is yeah. very creative. Um, so that's great. I'm glad that all three of us are, you know, especially me and you, we're trying to catch up to him moving down that Avenue. That's great. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I just wanted to very quickly add as well. Um, so one thing I've actually really respect about yourself and your channel more lately is, so I've never been a big comic book guy, personally. No. Um, I don't even think I've ever read really a single comic book ever. Really? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't even own Back to the Future ones, but I've never read them. Um, I, I know. I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you should read um, Back to the Future Transformers. That just came out. It was pretty good. Right, yeah, yeah, I've heard. I don't have them yet, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But, right. like, but for example, one thing that I actually like really respect about the videos you've done lately, um, mm -hmm. especially like the, say, the comic book breakdown kind of type videos you've been doing, is when you're talking about that comic book or say it's about, you know, Barbara Gordon, etc. I know that was a recent sure. one you did. Uh -huh. um, I love the fact that, you know, for someone who does read comic books or who doesn't, like even mentioning the videos each time, being like, right, check out these issues right. if you want to get into this story. Now, right. you know, don't get me wrong, like I could be go on Google and be like, right, I'll, I'll check what comes first. Sure. But, I, you know, it's just cool that you add that in because, again, you, you know, you don't have to. You can just be like, I'm talking specifically about this comic book. Right. That's it, you know? Um, so it's just interesting for if I ever did want to go into that, I could be like, right, okay, so these are the books Zeke's recommended let me source those first before getting into this one and sure. yeah i just like man that you have that in there because again if it's like me who doesn't read comic books we, i know where to start you know right i, I just want to commend you for that no well thank you for saying that i i so i have had a few people ask me like uh off offline and stuff like hey you know um one one person accused me of like being like a rude know-it-all, which I thought was pretty funny. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, I certainly have my opinions. Uh, the thing is, I like pushback. So if someone pushes back on me, I like pushing back on them. Um, and right. I think a lot of times we live in this, we live in a world where when people push back, they're not expecting to be pushed back again. Uh, you know, so they're like, they're like, hey, no, I'm the one challenging you here, and it's like, right, challenge accepted. So like, here's me challenging you back. <laughs> Um, and I, I like doing that. And I think, uh, there was a lot of people that started watching my channel that didn't like that, that now do like it. Cause it, they actually see that it creates a discourse. It creates a conversation right. as opposed to just one side getting their point across. And that's kind of my thing is I, I, I didn't start off a venom expert doing my show. So I had a res a level of, um, uh, respect to people who knew more than me. And I would yeah. always say in my episodes, like, Hey, look, I may be getting this wrong or I don't uh, I don't know fully what this means. So maybe one of you in the chat can explain it to me. I I want to it feel like a community. I see a lot of YouTubers who just say their opinion and they don't really invite conversation. And I've always wanted to be different. I'm like, well, I don't want to be on YouTube if I can't talk to people. Uh, so that's that's kind of my always my approach. And I understand that everyone comes in to comics at a different level. There used to be this saying um, in comics, like when we worked in comics, every comic book is someone's first comic book. So right. uh, so you have to understand that creatively when you're making the comic, and then you also have to understand that marketing the comic as well. Yeah. And I think a lot of long-term fans hate that because they feel like it's either talking down to them or they're like, hey, I know the story, why are you spoon feeding me? And it's like, yeah, but this part isn't for you. And so yeah. that's why I interjected into my my videos is I, I try to understand that 
someone may be watching every video of mine is someone's first video. And so right. I want them to know that, hey, it's cool that you're not on a level that some of the rest of us are at this point. You're still welcome here. Like we want you to be here and we want you to give your opinion because it still matters. So I, I'm right. that's very nice that you say that because I've had a few compliments of that lately too. And I'm like, okay, good. I'm on the right track. I'm like, I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm sure like same with you. Like if when I ever come onto your show and talk stuff, I'm sure it's going to be the same way. Like I, you're, you're leaps and bounds above me on all the back to future stuff and a lot of stuff you talk about on your channel, but that's where I, I like being in that. I like being a student. So right. it's, it's, I think I'll have a lot of fun coming over to your world for a little while. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have you on very shortly. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, but you got to move and stuff. You and Anthony are moving. You guys are moving right now. So focus on that. And then, yeah, well, at some point I would, yeah, I would love to step into your world and, and kind of see everything through your lens and your, and your audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. And you know, it's, as you said, like the comic book thing. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, like if I ever picked up a comic book, like I could go in one day, I could yeah. be a, a shy person, just not ask anyone at all about Venom and just pick right. up a random comic. Yeah. And, and there'll be something in there for me being like, oh, right, okay, so Eddie Brock, this happened at this time, or, you know, et cetera. Uh, uh, and, yeah, you know, by all means, you know, you're an expert in that. And as you said, a lot of people are, but you've got to cater for everyone. And right. if it's someone's right. first comic or, you know, first film entry, you've got to give them something there. Because otherwise, if every Venom comic that came out now was just for the expert only, I'd say, like, a newbie like me might be like, Nah, not not for me. I'll I'll go elsewhere. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I, yeah. Well, please don't go elsewhere. Stay with us as long as you want, Mike. <laughs> you're an awesome guy. I love your channel. Um, and I'm so glad that I met you through Mortal Kombat of all things. When people, I actually someone asked me recently. They were like, they're like, Do you see the new Mortal Kombat? I'm like, yeah. They're like, what was your favorite part? And I said, uh, being on Anthony's show finally and meeting Mike. And they were like. <laughs> what, what? Oh, and I'm like, I'm like i'm like no that's literally the my favorite thing about that movie is that it brought like because anthony's tried to get me to be on his show for years and and we've we've right. tried and it's just never worked out and so this was the one time and i loved it because we all had three had um, mostly different opinions on certain things some similarities um but uh but i love that that movie brought the three of us together in a way that is now making these episodes possible so i you know anyone out there yeah. learn a lesson from that even if you dislike something find other people to talk to with about it and you'll still make friends i promise you and that was yeah. the case here and uh and i'm so grateful for anthony and like he's anthony he's one of those guys i always say in life you meet people that are like lighthouses and right. anthony's a lighthouse anthony brings all these ships to shore uh and we all get to like hang out and meet each other and then uh, you know go yeah. back and then eventually we get lost at sea again and come back to anthony so uh oh so God. yeah he's he's a great guy and uh, i'm glad we met mike through him Man, I'm glad to have met you as well. Um, just, you know, I just respect that your channel and the fact that it's say like you started this passion for Venom, uh, out of right. all things Venom, right? And yeah. and it's gone on, you know, since then. And you said 650 episodes. I, you know, I, I've seen a couple of, you know, interviews and discussions yeah. and stuff before. And, and I know you said you never ever thought you would have got to this point. Never. Um, I noticed it's been so good to meet you. And yeah, like I've got to give praise to Anthony as well because I've said to him multiple times, I said, if I didn't meet you, Anthony, or anyone in that group on Facebook, like the YouTubers supporting YouTubers, yeah. I, by now, man, I probably would have even quit YouTube because I, I didn't have a direction. Like, sure. so, so my kind of strategy very quickly was when I first started YouTube, I was like, right, I'll do a review on this or this. But again, it wasn't like, you know, once a week upload or twice a week. It was like once a month and a half or uh, something right. popped up. And I, I just felt like I didn't have any audience, no community, just just no one, you know. And then, as you said, like the lighthouse kind of situation is true because since I met Anthony, I met Rashad, Fantastic, yourself, Dave, Jacob, Q, you know, all these awesome guys. And you know, ever since, just found common ground, you know. And I, even with yourself, I know you said you're not really on Facebook and stuff, um, but I know we still message from time to time. I still check out every discussion, whether it's you know just. Dis a spoiler discussion or a comic book read i'm just like wow i don't know about this but i'll check it out and uh, <laughs> i'll learn you know sure um, so certainly man, laugh, man. and honestly they just man it's been so great to meet you and just i'm uh, really thankful that you even had me on this parasite podcast like i really appreciate it 
Absolutely, man. And I, I'm going to have Anthony and Blacktastic and some of the other guys on too. And I know at some point I'll be on your channel. So guys and gals watching uh, all the parasites out there, please check out uh, the Z Review. Please check out Mike's work. I have a link to his channel down below, his uh, Instagram down below. Um, obviously, keep an eye on this guy. He's going to be sharing creative stuff with you, like, you know, some of his uh, other works outside of what he's doing now, but also check out what he has now. Like, my favorite thing to find on the internet is people with a passion, and you clearly have it, and I'm glad for whatever reason. I, I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Uh, I think you, you, when you say like, oh, other people, if it wasn't for this or this, I might not still be on YouTube. I think that that passion in you is too strong. I think you still would have been. Um, and I think, uh, and, and I think you, you are gonna, you know, you are going to build an audience through this and you will, like you said, you're going to start doing other things and, uh, and covering other stuff and you're going to rebrand and all these things are good. Moving forward is always a good thing. And even if I can get you know, one or two subscribers, uh, hopefully more, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I'll have, you know, helped in some way because that's what I want to do when I, I want to help if I can. And so anyone out there, please, if you enjoyed this episode, go subscribe to Mike. He's an awesome dude. And I, I do, I look forward to your episodes every week. Like I, it's one of those things where I dedicate like a time um, right. to watch YouTube. Like I, I sometimes have it on the background, but for people like you or Anthony, like I, I, I want to pay attention. Uh, like I don't want to just give you the view and then like, and then throw like a half-assed comment. I actually do want to watch the episode, um, you know, so so that's why I like I'll set out time. I'm like, all right, on this night after work for these three hours, I'm going to go check in on my YouTube friends. And so uh, so I'd like to say that you are in that group and I like to check out what you, you do, man. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, and wow. we will if, if I do anything else later on where I can collab with you again, because I was thinking about the Fantastic Four podcast actually right. having guests on that. Um, so okay. if I if I start developing that and that's something you're interested in, because through Fantastic Four, we had the first appearance of Silver Surfer, Galactus, Black Panther, Namar, right. like the Inhumans, like it's not just Fantastic Four. It's like you said, it's it always branches. It's always a, 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 a seed and it becomes a tree. Um, right. So uh, so yeah, well, I'll, I'll see if we can't collab somewhere down the road on something like that if you're interested. Oh, 100%, yeah. Uh, I don't know a lot about Fantastic Four, but uh, I've seen the two movies. <laughs> it's cool. Um, Maybe we'll talk uh, about those then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the greatest, but to be honest, I have a fondness for them. I grew up as a teenager watching those two movies. Sure. So I have a fondness of them. So, yeah, I anytime, too. anytime you need man, man, I'm always here. Literally, just hit me up. Awesome. And uh, and I don't mind that this episode ran a little longer because I had such a blast talking to you. So everyone else, let your you know comments be down uh, known down below. You know, feel free. We'll continue the conversation down there. I'm sure Mike will pop in, you know, every once in a while to see if there's any comments made or any questions. Yeah. Um, let those be known. But if you want to talk to Mike, go to his channel, subscribe to him, check him out, follow him on Instagram. Uh, he's an awesome dude. And uh, you know, please, please support him. And Mike, thank you for taking time out of your day to be here, man. It means a lot. No, honestly, man, uh, thanks for just having me. Like, it's been a blast, and, and I can't believe it's around 53 minutes, you know? <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> crazy. Um, but no, man, honestly, see, like, again, like, as you said, like, with Mortal Kombat, man, like, best thing about that was, you know, our discussion, just me, you, and Anthony, and meeting you, because he you were saying about like, you joining, and I was like, well, who's, who's Seek? You know, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, man, it's just been such a blast. And honestly, like, uh, it's quite late at night to you, but I don't care. <laughs> That's blast. awesome. Oh, well, I'll, and, and everyone, since we mentioned that episode a bunch of times, I'll put a link to Anthony's video with me and Mike on it uh, down below for Mortal Kombat. If you haven't watched it, check that out and subscribe to Anthony as well. He's the lighthouse. So, you know, you got to show support for the lighthouse as well. Um, yeah. Awesome, man. And uh, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Mike, thank you again. And everyone, uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.